but um, but essentially maybe starting with the um, with the smallest project that we have uh, <clears throat> created so far, but but maybe also one of the most complex. This is uh, René Redzepi. Uh, he is uh, by, by many uh, uh, seen as one of the best chefs uh, in the world. Uh, he pioneered um, the kind of regionalistic uh, cuisine uh, with his uh, restaurant Noma, uh, in, uh, located in, in Copenhagen, uh, where he sort of pioneered this idea of actually, in, in the case of Noma, which is short for Nordic food, Nordisk mel in Danish, Noma, um, that he kind of rediscovered the Nordic landscapes, uh, the flora and fauna of, uh, of Nordic nature, and, and, and sort of returned the attention to see how that those, those plants and those animals could actually be uh, seen as haute cuisine, because haute cuisine has been dominated by, <clears throat> um, by French and, and, and Asian cuisine. And, and, and also, like, I think the, the place where, where we really align with him was that he, he came up with this idea that, that, that maybe healthy could also be incredibly delicious. Um, we have this notion we call hedonistic sustainability that sustainable can actually be more enjoyable. Sustainable cities, sustainable uh, buildings can be more enjoyable, not just good for the environment, but also great for the people living there. He's somehow done that to, um, to food. Um, and uh, he came to us because he wanted to move his restaurant from, from where it was. He was going to shut it down. He went to Mexico, to Tulum for a few months uh, and cooked uh, on the beach there uh, to, uh, to this new place, uh, which is in the middle of... Um, uh, Christiania, this kind of hippie commune uh, in, in Copenhagen, uh, it's, it's part of the old fortification of, uh, of Copenhagen, which also makes it a historical uh, landmark. Um, it's, so it, it used to be the, the fortress. When Christiania came, it became this kind of, uh, uh, the, the hippies invaded in 1969 and they never left. Uh, you can buy uh, mild drugs uh, openly uh, in Christiania. This is what um, this is the, the main part of the building is an old uh, mine, sea mine storage. Um, this is what it, it looked like when we, uh, when we came to it. And, and we thought the, the city was going to you know, give us a medal for, for trying to make it nice. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it turned out that the, the city had this attitude that as long as it was only deteriorating organically, everything was fine. But as soon as we started trying to repair it, uh, everything uh, was incredibly restricted. Um, also, there was another sort of challenge because um, uh, Rene was going to change his uh, restaurant. It was not only going to be uh, regionalistic, it was also going to be seasonal. So he invented three seasons instead of four. Uh, New Year to April, everything from the sea, uh, because everything else is dead in uh, Scandinavian nature. So the sea is where you go for like seaweed uh, and, and seafood and anything that can be fermented or pickled. Uh, uh, May to September, uh, vegetable season, because that's actually when the nature in Scandinavia can feed humans. And then uh, October to, uh, to January, uh, game and forest, so basically venison, uh, berries, and roots. Um, and, and, you know, his idea has been this kind of rediscovering traditional Nordic elements. This is what the, the context looks like. It's kind of this kind of self-built a hippie commune in the old uh, 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 navy yards. This is actually what sort of traditional uh, uh, Nordic uh, villages look like. Somehow, this kind of, even though uh, Scandinavians like to dress in, in black, they like to paint their houses in bright colors. And, and, and where the, uh, you know, the Southern Europeans push them together to create urbanity uh, in, in the Arctics and the Nordics, they're somehow spread apart. Um, and and in the end, like sort of a, maybe our main inspiration came from this kind of typical uh, 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 Nordic farm, which is essentially an accumulation of individual houses. Each house is built for its own purpose, for the main family, for the, you know, the children, uh, as, as you know, the, fa the family and the generations grow, for the potatoes, for the animals, for the workshop. Um, so. This was the, the site, the old uh, mine storage. And then it quickly became clear that we could only place buildings in the footprints of where there had been buildings in the past. Uh, so it was kind of very limited repertoire. Uh, the entire back of house, all the labs and the kind of preparation kitchens fit perfectly inside the, the existing building. 
Um, and then we basically created this kind of mini village of all the other programs of the, uh, of the restaurant. Um, and finally, in the, in the three last footprints, uh, greenhouses, because this is it's almost like an urban farm. They actually grow uh, a lot of the, uh, the ingredients that they're, uh, that they're serving. So you have the preparation kitchen and the final service kitchen. The service kitchen, and this is because they, they, they make sort of 20 servings. Uh, so they came up with this kind of panopticon idea that Rene wants to be in the middle of everything from the kind of central position. He wants to overview the entire restaurant. And in return, the entire restaurant can see him uh, and his team. So, so we ended up designing for each room a particular building that is made with you know, as, as few materials as possible, mostly one material. Uh, on the inside and the outside, and, and connected into this kind of little uh, little square. So, uh, so here you see the sort of uh, ensemble. Um, actually, Pete Udolf uh, has created uh, this kind of incredible permaculture garden here uh, in the front, where they grow uh, a lot of the a lot of the plants. As you arrive, uh, uh, you're actually waiting to be seated inside the greenhouses, and then the experimental uh, kitchen where Rene prepares. Uh, uh, the sort of next season's uh, uh, dinner uh, is, is on the way, and then you find yourself to this kind of little cluster of, uh, of buildings. Uh, the first building is essentially uh, the entrance. It's, a, it's one big wardrobe, uh, a kind of wooden cabinet where you get rid of your, your coat, uh, and then you sort of enter into this uh, central uh, square, if you like, um, covered by glass, uh, like all the different buildings are protected from, uh, from the environment. But, but one of the things that Rene was insisted on was that when you are a seasonal chef, it's very important to be constantly aware of the weather. If it's going to be <clears throat> cold tomorrow, if it's going to be wet tomorrow, what kind of ingredients you can get. A lot of the menu is actually only found by foraging because the ingredients have not been labeled as ingredients. So there's no farmer making it. You have to find it in the forests or the parks of, uh, of Copenhagen. So then the, the main building, of course, is the, uh, is the, is the chef's kitchen. Um, the entire uh, ceiling is, uh, is a ventilation so that you can actually cook openly in the middle of, uh, of the space. You are, it, it's the only building that doesn't have any walls. Uh, all the air is, uh, is sucked out. Uh, the main dining uh, is made entirely out of oak, floor, walls, and ceiling. And in this case, so almost this idea like, like like their cuisine that they use very traditional ingredients, but in a slightly different way. Here we stacked it, uh, the, 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 the boards, almost like a Joseph Boyce, um, this kind of s solid stack of, uh, uh, of uh, oak boards. The, the entire facade can open up into the, into the permaculture garden uh, in the summer. Uh, light comes in from the, from the top, again, reminding you of the, uh, of the weather. And this kind of solid, uh, Solid wall, the same material both outside and inside. Oak is a hardwood, so it can actually uh, endure uh, uh, the outdoor weather. Um, as, you, as you move on to, uh, to the next, the, the, uh, the private dining um, is pine wood, this kind of typical Scandinavian, uh, more pale uh, uh, wood, uh, also on all surfaces. Uh, the shelving is the construction, uh, and again, you sort of take the the nature on the fortification uh, in. Uh, pine can't be outside untreated, so uh, uh, actually uh, um, uh, Rene and his chefs, we were so behind on construction before opening day and they already sold uh, the first uh, seating. So it ended up being uh, the chefs with their uh, creme brulee uh, torches uh, uh, treating the outside uh, 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 against uh, uh, the elements. So the, the torched wood uh, makes it uh, capable of being uh, outdoor. Uh, the lounge, uh, um, the fireplace is also the, uh, the skylight. Um, it's like this kind of traditional uh, Danish red brick. And to make it bright on the inside, it switches to uh, a white clay brick. Um, again, working with the tectonics of, uh, uh, of brick, but in this case, sort of to, to also resolve that the, the window sill becomes the ceiling held by the, by the brick. And, and again, this idea that you can open up uh, the entire corner and bring, bring in the elements uh, uh, when the season allows. Um, and again, like the brick, it's the same brick that actually constitutes the, the ceiling, like a ziggurat, more like a, like a traditional uh, 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 roof. 
the, the grill. The barbecue is, uh, is, is like a ventilated, a cross-ventilated chimney so that the, the chefs can stand uh, in, uh, as cold as possible uh, uh, with, uh, with the fire. Uh, the waiter's room is almost like a cabinet with a, with a skylight. And then finally, the, the old warehouse, we just installed a, a gigantic uh, shelf uh, that sort of organizes all the different aspects, uh, the different parts of the kitchen, the social spaces for the staff, and just cutting a single skylight in, uh, in the ceiling. But, but almost like this kind of trying to, to really take the entire sensibility and the entire philosophy of, of René and Noma and, and try to create a portraiture or capture the essence, what would be the architectural equivalent of, uh, of what, uh, what René has, uh, has created. Um, and, and, and of course, also, like, I think um, a kind of powerful manifestation of this kind of idea of an urban ecology that, that this, this restaurant is in the middle of, uh, of, of Copenhagen, uh, but actually the, the honey uh, is made there. Uh, uh, most of the uh, ingredients uh, that you're eating are actually made in the middle of, uh, of, the, of the city. 